Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to see how soccer players maximize their chances of scoring during a penalty kick. Here are the rules. The players each have only two strategies. They can either move to the left or to the right. And for our convenience, this is all going to be done from the perspective of the kicker. So if the goalie dives left, he is diving in the same direction as a ball kicked to the left. This is a bit of a simplification, as you can also kick straight ahead, or if you're the goalie, you can just stand still. And there's actually some evidence to suggest that going toward the middle might be a good idea, but just leaving it at these two strategies will give us a good basis for analysis to expand upon later. To further make our lives easier, we're going to be dealing with superhuman players. The kicker is really good, so he will never shoot wide of the goal. But the goalie is also really good, so he'll stop anything kicked in the direction that he guessed. So if the kicker wants to score, he has to kick in the opposite direction the goalie dives. Later on, we will see what happens when the kicker isn't as good. But for now, we're going to just focus on this matrix. That gives us this payoff matrix that you see on your screen. And at left, left, nothing happens. And at right, right, nothing happens. But at either of the other two outcomes, the kicker gets a point and the goalie loses a point. Now, you might be tempted to draw it up like this instead, where the goalie doesn't lose a point whenever the kicker score, scores a goal. And if you want to draw it this way, I understand where you're coming from, as the goalie doesn't actually score a point in the game of the actual game of soccer that's being played um, whenever he makes the save. But notice what happens when you draw it up this way. Look at what the goalie's payoffs are here. They're all zero. Functionally, this means the goalie is indifferent between all of his outcomes. That is, if you draw it this way, it means the goalie views an outcome where he gives up a goal as being just as good as when he makes a, a save. And clearly that's not correct. Meanwhile, doing it this way correctly shows that, the, that he prefers to stop a shot at the goal rather than giving up a goal. So we're going to use this matrix. Now all you have to do is solve the game. You will quickly see that there are no equilibrium pure strategies. If the players are currently playing kick left, dive left, then the kicker will want to deviate to kick right. If they're currently playing kick right, dive left, the goalie will want to switch to dive right. If they're playing kick right, dive right, the kicker will want to switch to kick to the left. And if they're currently playing kick left, dive right, the goalie will want to switch his strategy to dive left. So we've just made a loop there and shown that there are no pure strategy Nash equilibria. So let's break out our mixed strategy algorithm and find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, which has to exist. Let's begin by solving the kicker's mixed strategy. For player one to be willing to mix, some sigma has to exist such that player two's utility for diving left equals her utility for diving right. And all you have to do is write out these equations and we will be able to solve for the kicker's mixed strategy. Let's start by writing out the goalie's payoff as a function of some mixed strategy. Some percentage of the time the goalie gets zero, and the rest of the time he gets negative one. And we can rewrite that mathematically there, just like that. And we can do the same thing for kicking right, where you get negative one some of the time and zero the rest of the time. And that will give us the second equation right there. And we set these two equations that we just got equal to each other and solve for sigma. And if you follow the math that I have here, you wind up with the kicker kicking left and right, each with probability 1 half. Now we have to solve for the goalie's mixed strategy. Well, some percentage, of the, some percentage of the time the kicker will get 0, and the rest of the time he gets 1. And then we rewrite that mathematically on the final bullet point. And then we do the same thing for the utility of kicking right. Some percentage of the time the kicker gets 1, the rest of the time he gets 0, and that gives you that equation right there. We now have our two necessary equations, so all we do is put them together. And if you work it out, the sigma equals 1 half. So the kicker, like the goalie, will be diving left and right, each with probability 1 half. And that's what our equilibrium solution looks like for our game with superhuman soccer players. This is very similar to what we saw in matching pennies. But now let's make the kicker a little bit weaker. Say if he kicks to the left, he misses the goal entirely half the time. Consequently, we now have to write this as a probabilistic move here. Now before I start this new problem, I want you to write on a piece of paper your guess to the following question. In equilibrium, does the kicker kick more frequently to his left or to his right? Think about that for a moment. Okay, to find the answer, we repeat the same procedure as before, except using this new payoff matrix instead. We will start with the goalie's mixed strategy. This slide takes care of the utility function for always kicking left. And this slide takes care of the utility function for always kicking right. So that gave us two equations, and we combine them together and solve for sigma. And that shows that the goalie will dive left a third of the time and dive right two thirds of the time. If these steps are still a little bit unclear to you, I invite you to pause the video right now and go through them one by one on your own. 
Now let's move to the kicker's move. This slide covers for what happens when the goalie dives left. And this slide covers for when the goalie dives right. Again, these are the same equations. I'm producing them the same way as I have done before, just with this new matrix. We combine these two together and solve for sigma, and that gives us that the kicker will go to the left two-thirds of the time and to the right one-third of the time. And that's what our equilibrium solution looks like when the kicker is weaker. Now, you probably guess the kicker would go to his right more often than his left, as the right is his stronger side. However, as you see, that is not what occurs in equilibrium. Let's think about why. Well, as the goalie, I know that your right side is stronger, so I'm purposefully going to defend the right side more frequently. Consequently, to keep me as the goalie indifferent between my peer strategies, you as the kicker must shoot towards your weaker side more often to compensate for the very fact that it is your weaker side. And that's why you get this unexpected equilibrium.